Hello friends, in this video we are going to study about synapses and transmission in the heading of nervous system. So first of all we study about the structure of a neuron. This is the diagram showing the structure of a neuron and we all know that neuron is a highly specialized cell in nervous system which receives and transmits neural signals. It has a cell body. This is the cell body, dendrites and axons. These are the dendrites and this long is axon. Dendrites, they receive signals from other neurons. Axon transmits signals to other cells. Sometimes this axon can be over a meter long. It divides into many branches at its end point and its starting point is known as axon hillock, the axon hillock. Synapse, this part is known as synapse. It is a junction where the branched end of one axon transmits signal to another cell. Then neurotransmitters, they are chemical substances which pass information from the transmitting neuron to the receiving cell. Neurons can be sensory, interneuron or motor neuron. What are sensory neurons? From external stimuli to internal conditions, they will transmit the information. While an interneuron, it will transfer information from local circuits. They will form local circuits connecting neurons in the brain or ganglia. Well, motor neurons, they transmit signals to muscle cells, causing them to contract. What are nerves? Axons of neurons group together form nerves. Then the nervous system can be a central nervous system and we have a peripheral nervous system too. Central nervous system includes the brain and neurons that carry out sorting, processing and integration, while peripheral nervous system includes the Neurons that carry information into and out of the central nervous system. What are glia? They are neurons of both central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. They require supporting cells. And these supporting cells, they are known as glia. Now let us study how a neuronal sig signaling occurs. How the signal is going to occur in a neuron. This diagram is showing the membrane of a neuron cell and this is the outside of a nerve cell. This is the inside of a, this part is the inside of a nerve cell. First of all, we should understand what is membrane potential. See, the inside of a cell is negatively charged as compared to outside. As we can clearly see, this is the negative charge the inside of the cell and we have a positive charge which is positively charged on the outside of a nerve cell. This charge difference across the plasma membrane is called the membrane potential or voltage. This potential when the neuron is not sending any signal is known as resting potential and this is minus 60 to minus 80 mini volts. When a neuron receives a stimulus, the membrane potential changes. What is action potential? Rapid changes occur in this membrane potential when a stimulus is received by a neuron and this is known as action potential. The concentration gradient of sodium and potassium outside and inside a nerve cell is maintained by sodium potassium pump. In this diagram, we see that this is the sodium potassium pump. Okay. This pump, what does it do? It actively transports sodium out of the cell and potassium into the cell by using ATP. See here, this is pumping sodium out of the cell and potassium into the cell. This diagram also very clearly so shows that the concentration of sodium is very high in the outside of the neuron while the concentration of potassium is very high in the inside. Okay. 
So this pump works by using ATP. Concentration gradients for chloride and some large anions are ignored. Okay, They also affect somewhat but the effect is so little that we can ignore them. This pump works as 3 sodium ions out of the cell for every 2 potassium ions are transported in. So this pump will let 3 sodium ions out for every 2 potassium ions in. A net export of positive charge. Okay, so there is a net export of positive charge. Because 3 positive charges are going out and 2 are coming in. So we are exporting 1 extra charge outside the cell. And this pump is slow, very less change in membrane potential occurs by this pump. What are ion channels? We have a look at this diagram again. This was a sodium potassium pump here. And these remaining, they are all ion channels. Sodium channel and potassium channel. These brown are the so potassium channels and this yellow one is sodium channel. What do they do? They have a major role in creating the resting membrane potential of minus 60 to minus 80 millivolts. Sodium potassium pump alone cannot maintain this resting membrane potential. Potassium channels, they allow only potassium to diffuse freely while sodium channels, they allow only sodium. And potassium channels, they are always open. Hence, they are also leak channels we can say that they are leak channels and they are very important for maintaining the resting membrane potential a very high difference in concentration of potassium inside and outside the cell favors a net outflow of potassium sodium channels are rarely open okay so because of these channels there is always a net outflow of potassium is being favored by these ion channels. Now let us study what is hyperpolarization. When a stimulus arises, it causes closed voltage gated potassium channels to open. Then what happens? Diffusion of potassium ions will occur out of the neuron. Its diffusion will increase. Because of this, there will be a rise in the magnitude of membrane potential. And this is what is known as hyperpolarization. See, we see it again. The voltage gated potassium channels will open. They will cause the diffusion of potassium out of the neuron. And this will increase the magnitude of membrane potential. And this is known as hyperpolarization. Because of this, what is happening inside of membrane is now more negative. Any stimulus that increases the outflow of positive ions or the inflow of negative ions is known as hyperpolarization. Okay. Now, what is depolarization? It is the reduction in the magnitude of membrane potential. It involves gated sodium channels. See here, sodium channels are involved. They open and membrane's permeability to sodium increases. Sodium diffuses into the cell along its concentration gradient and this will cause the depolarization. Now what is graded potential? A shift in the membrane potential in response to hyperpolarization or depolarization is known as graded potential. Its magnitude varies with the strength of the stimulus. Actually, a small current is induced by graded potential, which slowly disappears with time. Okay. So now, let us have a look at this diagram. This diagram shows three parts, hyperpolarization, depolarization, and action potential. So let us study this diagram. First of all, we see that in hyperpolarization, this part of the graph is showing the stimulus. This is the membrane potential. This is the threshold of a stimulus. Okay. And this graded hyperpolarization 
by two stimuli is being shown in this graph. These are the two stimuli. This is one, this is second. That increase the membrane permeability to potassium ions. Larger stimulus produces larger hyperpolarization. It is very clear in this graph. Okay. And now coming to this graph, this is showing graded depolarization by two stimuli. This is showing depolarization. This one was showing hyperpolarization that increased membrane permeability to sodium. Here it was potassium. These are the depolarizations. Okay. And this graph is showing a strong depolarizing stimulus. The stimulus is so strong that it is crossing the threshold and this is known as action potential. Action potential triggered by depolarization that reaches the threshold in this graph. Okay, so what actually is action potential? When there is a massive shift in membrane potential due to strong depolarization, a huge change in membrane voltage occurs. This huge voltage change is known as action potential. Action potentials are different from graded potentials because they have a constant magnitude and can regenerate in adjacent regions of the membrane. Therefore, action potential spread along axons and signal is easily transmitted over long distances. The cause of action potential is basically voltage-gated ion channels. If depolarization increases the membrane potential to a level called threshold, the voltage-gated sodium channels open. Sodium ions flow into the neuron and further depolarization occurs. Since sodium channels are voltage-gated, Increased depolarization causes more sodium channels to open, leading to an even greater flow of current. This, will, this is what a positive feedback that triggers a very rapid opening of many voltage-gated sodium channels and the membrane potential changes markedly. Of course, it will be temporarily. This all is known as action potential. Hope it is now all clear to you. Thank you friends. Thanks for watching the video.